reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Bless the Lord, all you angels, you ministers of the Lord, do his holy will. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him and said of him, He is a true child of Israel. There is no duplicity in him. Nathanael said to Jesus, How do you know me? Jesus answered and said to him, Before Philip called you, I saw you under the fig tree. Nathanael answered him, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Jesus answered and said to him, Do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than this. Then he said, Amen, amen, I say to you, you will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending on the Son of Man. The Gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Saints Michael, Gabriel, and Raphael, three of the archangels. As a matter of fact, one of the archangels is partially the patron of our parish, Annunciation. Gabriel is the one who announced to Mary that she was to be the mother of Jesus. So we have a, a personal connection there. Uh, Gabriel is known as the, the one who delivers messages. Uh, Michael is the one who defends God's honor. And Tobias is the one who guides. In the Old Testament, he was the guide of one of the, one of the prophets, Tobias. Interesting that we have in the book of Revelation that very, very traditional image of Michael the Archangel. Before I go into that, I just want to touch, in my life, the significance of Michael. Michaels have been in, into our family for a long time. It started when my, fa- my grandfather came from Italy, he came from Pescara, and his name was Constantino Scurdi, so he said Constantino Scurdi, I'm sure, at Ellis Island. And whoever took his name down, either didn't understand Constantino, didn't understand him, and he said, Michael. So, so he made my grandfather Michael. Okay, so my brother was named after him in the Italian tradition, the firstborn, and of course my, my brother named his son after him, and Michael named his son after him. So we have Michaels, Michaels, Michaels. Even my, my godchild is John Michael. There's something about Michaels, this has nothing to do with the scriptures, but there's something about Michaels, and if you know Michael, you know what I mean. They are lovable, they are wonderful, and it's all in their eyes. And they're terrors. At the same time, my brother was the perfect example of that, and his son, who's now a practicing dentist, is another perfect example. Wonderful person, but that kind of uh, out-of-it personality, that, that, that... that fighter personnel, and I don't mean that he's belligerent, but that, that really, really outstanding, go-out-of-yourself kind of personality. That's a Michael. And his, his son is six years old. He is the epitome of Michael. We, I, we just came back from Legoland with him and, and Sal, his brother. And it was a wonderful time because he's so excitable and so happy and has a cute little lisp and, and and God forbid you call him baby. You can't say baby Michael. Oh, even from when he was tiny, you couldn't say baby Michael. Okay, so Michael, I don't know how it happened, but the, those who are Michaels have that Michael personality. And what was Michael's personality? We see in the book of Revelation, he defended God's honor. His name, Michael, quis uteus in Latin, who is like God in, in, in Hebrew, Michael. And we have the story in Revelation Uh, Basically, the devil and his companions, who were beautiful, and he was so beautiful, his name was Light Carrier, Lucifer, Luciferus, Light Carrier. He decided, according to the book of Revelation, and this is John's interpretation, the author of the book of Revelation, he decided not to honor God God anymore. I'm not going to honor God. 
I'm just as beautiful as God, he thought. And he rebelled. And who comes to God's honor is Michael. And Michael defends him, throws him out, he, he, and he becomes a dragon. And then you see that sculpture of Michael very often with the dragon under his feet, and he's slaying him with, with his sword. And of course, the big wings and the armor. That's how we connect Michael, visually, artistically. But the, the concept of Michael as defender of God's honor, defender of the church. Currently, we are praying to St. Michael in our parish, special prayers to St. Michael, defender of the church throughout the world, because the church is in such a terrible situation, especially in the Middle East, the persecutions. Of, and who's the church? People, our brothers and sisters, the Eastern Christians. So we pray to Michael here in our parish, but throughout the world. Michael's, oh, Michael always appeared in, in history when, when times were rough. There's the big church, it, not the, the big castle, Castle San Angelo in Rome, which is the castle, was Hadrian's tomb eventually, becomes a castle. And on top of the castle, during one of the invasions of Rome, the image of Michael appears, wielding his sword, and with that, the invasion subsides. There's Mont Saint-Michel in, in France. Everyone knows that beautiful event and that beautiful place. Uh, again, uh, a place of pilgrimage, a, a place of meditating on God's power in our lives. And Mikael, Michael, major, major, major cities throughout the world all have something named after him, usually on a mountainside. Again, why? Because he's the defender of God. Now, to say he's the defender of God's honor is one thing, but we're here because we have to access the imagery and we have to access the, the, the sainthood and the holiness of that concept. He who is honoring God. You and I have to be Michaels, not necessarily wielding a sword or a torch or anything, anything dramatic, but we have to defend God's honor by our activities, by our lives, by our consistency of behavior. Nathaniel goes over to Jesus, and Jesus indicates to, to Nathaniel that he had a vision of Nathaniel coming to see him. And with that, Nathaniel is impressed with Jesus. And, and Jesus says, you're going to see plenty of other stuff that's going to make you even more impressed. You're going to see God's angels coming and, and leaving heaven. The role of Nathaniel as a follower of Jesus, and as he's sometimes called Bartholomew, um, is to be an apostle. Not to be impressed with the fact that, that, that we're going to have a vision, but to be impressed with the fact that every one of us is called to be an apostle, to be a person who takes on Christ and lives Christ in the world. Gabriel, announcing good news to Mary at the Annunciation, Speaking good news, that's our task. And what is the good news? The gospel of Jesus and our faith in Jesus. And we as Christians need to be announcing the good news. Sometimes, and I, I think of St. Francis of Assisi, we all are called to preach, and sometimes we should use words. Our actions announce the good news in imitation of Gabriel. And, of course, we have, we have um, Tobias, as, as we have the, the celebration of all of the, the archangels, Tobias, Raphael, and Michael. R Raphael was a guide, and he, he led Tobias in the Old Testament. And to, even to this day, he's, he's, he's one of the patrons of policemen, patrons of police, uh, EMTs, people who guide, people who watch over. And again, it's the Christian message for all of us. It doesn't have to be an angel to be someone who is compassionate, who, who can lead, who can guide, who can announce the good news, who can defend God's honor. You don't have to be an archangel. You have to be a Christian. And it's Jesus who talks about the value of the Christian over the angels. John the Baptist comes on the scene. And Jesus re refers to John the Baptist as a holy, holy person. But one of God's elect are more holy than him. And St. Francis of Assisi talks about, if I saw a priest and a, an angel walking down the street toward me, I bow toward the priest because he is redeemed by God. He used a priest, but it could be any one of us, any Christians. We are redeemed by God. 
God's angels are separate categories. They're meant to, to worship God, to be his messengers, but we are meant to be his apostles. We have been saved by the blood of Christ. We are baptized into the body of Christ. No angel has ever been baptized into the body of Christ. And angels are not dead people with wings. Get, get rid of that imagery. For a while there, everybody was wearing a little angel on their shoulder, an angel in my pocketbook, an angel here. Don't go with the myth. That's, that's ancient, ancient mythology. Our, our faith is based on Revelation, book of Revelation, and the scriptures. And God's angels are his messengers, his protectors, and his guides. And we have to imitate them.